heart went Matrix. This is a singular term of matrices and refers to a rectangular arrangement of numbers. Okay, The word matrix or the term matrix was coined by James Sylvester. Sylvester. But the algebraic aspects, um, algebraic aspects of matrices are by his friend Arthur Cayley. And all this developed, I think, within the 19th century. Okay. And among definitions, Matrix is a rectangular arrangement of a set of numbers, more importantly, enclosed in, uh, it could be a parenthesis, a bracket, or a brace. But most of the references use box brackets to enclose our matrices. Pero ang mahalagang kailangan matandaan nyo dito is, it will be considered a matrix Wag lang yung absolute symbol ang mag enclose dun sa ating sets of numbers. Okay? So, kahit alin dito can be accepted. Some references accept parentheses and brackets. Wag lang maging absolute symbol yung mag enclose dun sa array of numbers na meron tayo. Okay? So, itong rectangular arrangement of numbers or um, or functions okay pwede siyang it could be of any size let's say we have an example of uh, 1 0 0.3 2 negative 5 0 0.5 3 1 5 negative 1 okay so let's say we have this a matrix. This matrix has three columns and three rows. Okay, the horizontal section refer referred to as your rows, and the vertical sections referred to as your columns. And sizes of matrices are given in the notation m by n. Where M refers to the number of rows and N refers to the number of columns. So it will always be row by column. If you are given M by N, it means you have M rows by N columns. Okay, so this particular example that we have here is a matrix of 1, 2, 3 rows and 1, 2, 3 columns. Thus, this matrix is sized as 3 by 3. We can write that as a subscript of the matrix itself or we can write this as a subscript of the notation we use on matrices. So matrices are named using capital letters. So let's say this is matrix A. Matrix A. Okay. Ma the matrix itself is named by a using a capital letter and the letter will do. And it can be um, Pwede siyang gamitan ng subscript that would note its size. So, for matrix A, this could be A33. Or it could be A3 by 3. Or to avoid confusion, sometimes you write that as A, 3. For cases wherein you have two-digit numbers of rows or columns. Okay, remember... The first subscript would indicate the numbers of rows, the horizontals. And the second subscript, subscript will refer to the number of columns. Okay. So, every, every data that we have inside our rectangular array are known as elements. Or it is more accepted to be known as entries. Okay, so, yung entry natin dito, okay, 
are noted using small letters naman. So, a particular element here will be represented by the small version or the lowercase version of the notation we use for the matrix. So, if this is matrix A, capital letter A, its entries will be named as small letter A. And every entry it and every entry will be represented uniquely based on its position, on what row, and on what column the particular entry or the particular element is located. Thus, in general, every entry or every element is named as AIJ, where I refers to the i row, and J refers to the Jth column where the element is located. So, for element 1, or for entry 1, this is A11, right? First row, first column. 0 0.3 is named as A21. So, A11 is equivalent to 1. A21, that means second row, first column. That's 0 0.3. Okay, sometimes, we use again comma. To distinguish between the rows and the columns, especially if we have two-digit um, two-digit numbers of columns or rows. So, halimbawa, you have A, 1, 2, 1. But it's difficult to identify if you have 12, you are at the 12th row, first column, or if you're at the first row, 21, 21st column. So, to avoid confusion, a comma will always be used to distinguish between the rows and the columns. Okay, so instead of this, it could be written as A1, 21 to mean first row, 21st column, or vice versa, depende, or depending on what we have on our matrix. Okay. Also, uh, you have to note that based on the definition, this is a rectangular arrangement of numbers, so it can be real, it can be complex, as long as it is a number, or it can be represented, or the entries may be represented by functions. Ibig sabihin, pwede tayo magkaroon ng variables dito. We can have, a, we can have um, quadratic expressions or polynomials inside our matrices. Okay? Some matrices are even given to us using formulas. For example... For example, you are given um, matrix A, 4 by 3, is equivalent to entries I minus J. Which means, you have a matrix with 4 rows and 3 columns, and every entry in that particular matrix will follow a formula of I minus J, where I represents the i row, and J represents the Jth column where the element or the entry is located. So for an for a matrix A of 4 by 3, it may be composed of diba you'll have here A11, this is A21, A31, A41. Four rows, first column, then you'll have A12, A22. A32, A42. Four rows, one, two, three, four, second column. And then you have the last column, the third column. That's A13, A23, A33, and A43. These are all the elements or the entries that we'll have for matrix A. And every entry here will follow this formula. So entry A11 is simply what I. Uh, the i row minus the jth column where A11 is located. So this is first row, first column. That would be 1 minus 1. Therefore, your first entry will be 0. So we simply take the difference between the i and the jth column. The i row and the jth column. So for A21, that would be 1. For A31, that would be 2. For A41, that would be 3. Correct? That's 4 minus 1, 3 minus 1, 2 minus 1, 1 minus 1. For this one, we'll have 1 minus 2, that's negative 1. 2 minus 2 is 0. 3 minus 2 is 1. 4 minus 2 is 2. For this one, we have negative 2. You have negative 1. You have 0. 
and then we have one there you have it your matrix a which is four by three four rows three columns and every element or entry here follows this notation or formula so it means our matrices since it is um, uh, defined as a rectangular arrangement it could be in a general sense so we can have um, an infinite amount of size for our matrices okay and there will be cases wherein the numbers of rows will be equivalent to the number of columns and as such we call that a square matrix so pag equal daw yung numbers ng rows natin dun sa number of columns natin, then we call that a square matrix. And in matrices, square matrices are the most important because majority of the algebraic applications are um, applicable or can be applied on square matrices. Okay? So, square matrices will have equal number of rows and equal number of columns. Let's say, for example, we have matrix B, 2 by 2, or matrix B, 2 by 2, that would be B11, B21, B12, and B22. The number of rows will be equivalent to the number of columns. Remember, the number of row or the number of column, which is equivalent, which are equal on square matrices, will identify with to us the order of our matrix. So, if this is a 2 by 2 matrix, ibig sabihin, this is a matrix in the second order. If it is a 3 by 3 matrix, it's a matrix in the third order. Which only means, only square matrices will have orders. Okay? Next, we also have single matrices or single row matrix. For this case, if you have a single row matrix, you also refer to that as a row vector because most of the time, we only use single row matrices to illustrate to us the coefficients of a vector. Same goes for a single column matrix. We also call that a column vector, which we use for the representation of vectors in fields. Okay. Another example of a matrix is a null matrix. So if all the elements of a square matrix, remember, only the definition of a null matrix is that it is a square matrix. So if all the elements of a square matrix daw po ay zero, then the matrix is said to be null. Ibig sabihin, every element represented by Aij inside the matrix, which is equivalent to zero, which becomes equivalent to zero, becomes a null matrix itself. So, if A is a null matrix, then it should be square, and all its elements must be zero. And this is a 3 by 3 null matrix. Okay. If the elements on the main diagonal are non-zero, then the matrix is said to be a diagonal matrix. Okay. So, of course, both uh, both rectangular, kung ang pag-uusapan natin dito ay shapes, both rectangles and squares have diagonals, okay? Pero pagdating sa matrix, um, diagonal matrices are only considered diagonal matrix if the main diagonal is non-zero. If only the main diagonal is non-zero, then we call it a diagonal matrix. But in matrices, only square matrix may be considered as diagonal matrix because siya, kasi siya lang yung exacto. Diba? If this is a rectangular matrix, we won't have a main diagonal that intersects with all the elements. If your diagonal is this one, diba? we do not know which two elements should suffice this position. So it's not considered a diagonal matrix. So, yung diagonal matrices natin are possible if it's a square matrix. So, if square matrix yan, at yung main diagonal mo lang, ang hindi zero, non-zero, magbigay tayo ng element or entry, 
Yan. Ibig sabihin, this is referred to as your diagonal matrix. A matrix we're in, only the main diagonal is non-zero. Okay? Identity matrix is a square matrix, number one. Number two, identity matrix is a diagonal matrix. Ibig sabihin, yung main diagonal lang ang may, ang may element or uh, main diagonal lang ang non-zero ang entry. And, so it's a square matrix, it's a diagonal matrix. And the elements or the entries in the diagonal are all equivalent to 1. So kung ito ay 1, 1. Ibig sabihin, this is a square matrix, this is a diagonal matrix, and the diagonal are all equal to 1, therefore it's known as an identity matrix. But, if instead of 1, you love any other number in the main diagonal, let's say you have 2, tapos lahat ito ay 2, then we call this a scalar matrix naman. Okay? So if Again, if it has equal numbers of rows and columns, we call that a square matrix. Okay? If the square matrix has non-zero elements in the main diagonal only, we call that a diagonal matrix. If a square matrix, which is a diagonal matrix, happens to have one in the main diagonal, we call that a unique matrix or identity matrix. But if the square matrix, which is a diagonal matrix, has non-zero entries in the main diagonal not equivalent to 1. So, it could be 2, it can be 3, it can be negative, it can be decimal, it can be fractions. Then, we call that a scalar, a scalar matrix provided all the data or the element in the main diagonal are equal to each other. Next, if your square matrix is not a diagonal matrix but Every entry below the diagonal element is zero. So, ito hindi siya diagonal. For example, if you have a matrix which is not a diagonal matrix because every entry daw, bawat entry daw, sa ilalim ng main diagonal or sa ilalim ng diagonal elements are zero, ibig sabihin yung nasa taas non-zero non yun sa so palitan natin to. See, this is 3, 4, 5. Then, this is considered an upper triangular matrix. Kasi parang yung upper triangle ng iyong square lang yung may entries. Or upper triangle lang ng iyong square, yung non-zero ang entries. Therefore, we call that upper triangular matrix. Pero, kung Every element above the diagonal elements are non are zero. Kung ito namang taas yung zero mo, ibig sabihin lower triangular matrix naman siya. Kasi yung lower triangle naman ang may laman. So three, four, five, six. Tapos lahat ng nasa ibabaw ng main diagonal ay zero na. Ibig sabihin yung lower triangle ang may laman. Then we refer to this as a lower triangular 